Gopalan and Company in the Madras High Court. He appeared for various public and private sector undertakings, nationalized banks, scheduled banks. He was also the standing counsel for State of Tamil Nadu Electricity Board. On 2-3-2000, he was appointed as a permanent judge of Madras High Court and rendered many landmark judgments during his tenure of over 11 years. He was transferred to Jammu and Kashmir on 24-2-2011 and was appointed as an acting Chief Justice of Jammu and Kashmir on 7-4-2011. And on 18 9 2011, he took oath as Chief Justice of Jammu and Kashmir. He was finally elevated as a Supreme Court judge on 2 4 2012. I won't refer to many of his judgments while he was a judge in the Madras High Court, but two deserves special mention because it draw too much of applause from the entire state, media, bureaucrats, and all lawyers. One of the judgments rendered by him was before a division bench when he gave a dissenting opinion holding the election of municipal council wards and declaring 99 wards election to be illegal. But the, it was a dissenting opinion and the matter was referred to a third judge. The third judge decided in his favour and it was upheld and it came up to Supreme Court and it was also affirmed there. That judgment led to a furore also among the politicians in particular, but the news report gave some commendable observation for him which I want to read and quote. One of the most respected bureaucrat of that time wrote an article in News Today on 13-1-2007 and I quote, through his judgment, Mr. Justice Khalifullah has given cubic content to the immortal words of Justice Felix Frankfurter. Judges are not merely the habitation of bloodless categories of the law which pursue their predestined ends. Instead of taking a sterile, bloodless and neutrally neutral view between good and evil, he has categorically declared that in a democratic setup, holding of election in a free and fair manner assumes great importance. He has also stated that he was convinced that there was an extreme and extraordinary situation which warranted an extraordinary remedy. In view of the magnitude of the situation, he has concluded that it would be wholly inappropriate if fresh elections were not ordered to a majority of the wards. By his verdict, setting aside the civic election of 99 wards out of 155, Mr. Justice Khalifullah has demonstrated that another great American judge and jurist Benjamin N. Cardo Cardojo was absolutely right when he stated, and I quote, the great tides and currents which engulfs the rest of men do not turn aside in their course and pass the judges by. Appreciating the uncompromised stand taken by the learned judge, the entire editor guild also in the Madras Journal reported, and it is reported in 2007 1 MLJ page 1 which reads as under. Whatever may be the ultimate majority opinion that might emerge, it fills us with pride that a judge obtains a special eulogical mention in the press for what it perceives to be correct decisions. Praiseful references are made in obituary columns of farewell occasions, but when it comes while the judge is still on the bench, not merely from a lawyer who may have an axe to grind, but from the press, it is a defining movement for the judiciary itself. In the Supreme Court, he rendered many landmark judgments, and the leading one is the Constitution Bench Judgment in Union of India versus Sri Haran, and he was the author of the majority judgment. It is reported in 2015. While interpreting section 432 and 435 of the CRPC with regard to the power of suspension and remittance, his Lordship held that the exercise of power under section 432 and 433 of Code of Criminal Procedure will be available to the appropriate government even such consideration was made earlier and exercised under section article 72 by the President or under article 161 by the Governor. As far as the application of article 32 of the Constitution by this Court is concerned, it is held 
that the powers under section 432 and 433 are to be exercised by the appropriate government and it is not for the court to exercise that power and it is always left to be decided by the appropriate government. So while interpreting 435 CRPC, it also held that con consultation means concurrence and the primacy will be of the centre. In Cone Elevator, he gave a dissenting judgment while interpreting contract for sale of goods and works contract. Again, taking a view of Article 21, he said right to education in Maharshi Yograsi case is a fundamental right and should be read in Article 21 of the Constitution because this alone can lead to the development of the nation as a whole. There are many umpteen judgments and it can go on. One of the remarkable thing when the NJC matter was going on, the constitution bench sought opinion from all the judges, all the general public as well and everybody. Justice Khalifullah gave his suggestions and I'll read in brief about his five or six suggestions which are really valuable and needs consideration. A. The time schedule for collegium to make recommendation for existing vacancy and also for vacancies arising in the next six months should be defined and prescribed. The independence of the collegium has to be maintained but at the same time he also said that the involvement of bar for recommendations should be there and people with not less than 25 years of standing should also be considered both lawyers and jurists. And after the panel is being prepared, the panel should be double the vacancy. That should be sent to the committee or the bar as nominated only for their comments. This will remove the long time question about transparency and will meet that test. In the case of High Court appointment, he was of the opinion that the sitting judge or the High Court Chief Judge should also be there present when the Collegium actually takes the matter of elevation of that particular High Court Judge because he will be in a better position to answer any doubt or clear any query. He is a wonderful sportsman, I can say from my personal experience. A really spirited person. When the match was scheduled between Supreme Court Bar Association and the Honorable Judges 11, Honorable the Chief Justice of India said, I have appointed him as the playing captain. So you need to consult him for anything. The Honorable Chief Justice of India was the non-playing captain. And from our side, Mr. Dave was the non-playing captain, Dushyan Daveji. And I was made the playing captain. On the field, we were together. Honorable Justice Khalifullah.